Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game, the best Magic the Gathering Arena content channel for beginners and free to play individuals alike. Today we're looking at Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths, Mardu Humans Limited Cheat Sheet. If you're interested about how to improve your skill set within drafts and sealed, I really recommend you start in part one of the series and then just watch uh, all of it, all 11 parts, right? This is. Um, I don't know, we're about halfway through this video, so there's going to be a few still to come out. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit your bell icon so you're notified of those releases as well. So Mardu Humans uh, focuses on a couple different archetypes. We really want to abuse the Oro cycle because it's so powerful. But if we get the chance or the opportunity to add Menace, uh, why not take that, right? Because Evasion is just that powerful. So we're using Cycling and Menace, humans that benefit from plus one, plus one Anthem effects, which is Sanctuary Lockdown primarily, right? We're using creatures that have cycle triggers, and then we can take off color cards that cycle for colorless mana. Some of our key picks here are Savai Thundermane or Draineth Stinger, Frail Scare Mentor, Sanctuary Lockdown, or Bastion of Remembrance. There were so many good cards within Mardu Humans that I had to kind of reorganize it differently than I had in the previous cheat sheets. So to go over that, I have certain cards stacked. You'll see Savai Thundermane is on top of Draineth Singer. So I think you should take Savai Thundermane unless there's no Savai Thundermane, in which case you should take the Icor or the Draineth Stinger, right? Because you can't take both of them if they're in the same pack. So you're gonna need to pick one of them uh, regardless. So I think Savai Thundermane beats Draineth Stinger, and I think Sanctuary Lockdown beats Bastion of Remembrance. But again, it's the same thing. If there's no Sanctuary Lockdown in the pick, and there is a Bastion of Remembrance, you should take the Bastion of Remembrance. But if there's both of them, I think you should take Sanctuary Lockdown first. So that's how that works. I have also stacked the removal because I wanted to start incorporating more removal for you guys within one document so you don't have to refer to a second document for removal and battle tactics. So with that being said, the way the cheat sheet works is we have the bombs. I'm sure you know that. Let me scoot my cam down for a second. Bottom row is bombs. These are cards that if you pull in your opening packs, you're probably going to want to look at building this archetype. Obviously, if you pull General uh, Kudro of Draineth, you might just play Orja of Humans. However, if you pull some cool red cards along the way, um, this is a good opportunity to take advantage of that. Um, so, Labyrinth Raptor, General Kudro of Draineth, and Mythos, Mythos of Snapdax are our bombs. Then our high priority picks for our most important cards, we have Savai Thundermane, Draineth Stinger, Feral Scare Mentor, Sanctuary Lockdown, and Bastion of Remembrance. Our notable removal for the set is Easy Prey, Heartless Act, and Blood Curdle. Valiant Rescuer is another high priority pick within the set. Our low priority picks are cards that we are taking uh, anytime that we can't get our hands on anything better, right? And that's the same way that it's gonna work with our lowest priority picks. And then if we can't get any of those, we're just filling with dirt. Hopefully it's on color, if not, uh, whatever, right? Just uh, don't play those cards. <laughs> so our low priority picks, we have Forbidden Friendship, Snare Tactin, uh, Sonoros, Howl Bonder, and Prickly Marmoset, along with Flourishing Fox. So. You can see how these cards still benefit from either cycling or uh, menace, right? Up top for our fill deck slash lowest priority, Call of the Death Dweller, Draineth Healer, Ferocious Tigorilla, <laughs> uh, Bushmeat Poacher, which I found to be a weird name, and Tentative Connection. Uh, that's a nice combo there with Tentative Connection if you have a Sacrifice Outlet, right? So that is uh, the general layout of it. That is your card priority. This video is brought to you by aetherhub.com and MTGA Assistant, which you can download through the link in the description below. I am live on Twitch every single day at twitch.tv slash hellogoodgame at 6 a.m. PST. We also have daily uploads on YouTube at youtube.com slash hellogoodgame. So be sure to check both of those out and most importantly, join our Discord with the link in the description below. We have over 600 community members all big, well not all of them uh we do have some experts for sure uh even people more so skilled than myself which is great so uh we have a broad spectrum 
of skill sets available within the Discord, and everybody's kind of helping everybody at different levels. It's actually a really unique environment. So I really recommend that you join that. Just introduce yourself and then check out our communities, competitions, and giveaways tab for all of the ways uh, that you can interact with the community for fun and uh, be rewarded for such. So that is our cheat sheet, guys. The download link for this is gonna be in the description below. It is also found with all of our other cheat sheets in our beginner's handbook. The link for that, again, also obviously below. Uh, let's get rid of that and take a look at our cards one by one and talk a little bit about the strategy and how different things can work together, right? So we're gonna break down the cards, common, uncommon, and then our bombs, right? First up, we're looking at our white commons. We have Draineth Healer. This is a two, two for two. And whenever you cycle another card, you gain one life. That's all right, but what's really great about this card is that it has cycling for one. So if you don't need to gain life against an aggro deck and you don't need the 2-2 two -two on the field for some reason, you can use this uh, ability to cycle and power up other aspects of your deck, right? Because we're using creatures uh, that have trigger effects from cycling. Moving on, Snare Tactician. Whenever you cycle a card, tap target creature and opponent controls. This card costs three and it's a 2-3. I'll add that both of these cards are humans as well. That's going to be a key component here. So we can tap our opponent's creatures. This is really good because there are a lot of big baddies in the set, you guys. There's Godzilla's, there's Mothra's. There is a lot of shenanigans going on that we do not like to deal with. And how often are people pulling Apexes? It feels like every draft you do, someone has dropped an Apex at some point in that draft. So no, Snare Tactician is a really good way to deal with that. Moving on to our black commons, Bushmeat Poacher for four. It's a two four. We can pay one, sacrifice another creature. You gain life equal to that creature's toughness plus draw a card. So that's actually not so bad, right? We get to draw a card and it's a human soldier, another human, right? This works really good with tentative connection, which we'll get to in a second, which allows us to take our enemy's creature and then we can attack with that creature and then sacrifice that creature and draw a card with our poacher. So that's not so bad. We also have Blood Curdle for four. This is an instant spell. Destroy target creature. Put a menace counter on a creature you control. So this is a menace slash humans deck. So this is great removal for the deck that's specific to um, a deck that would want to incorporate menace, right? So moving on to our red commons, we have Draineth Stinger for two. It's a two, two. Whenever you cycle a card, Draineth Stinger deals one damage to each opponent and it has cycling for one. Woo, this is a beast in limited you guys everybody is drafting this card uh, as high priority not only does it deal chip damage to your opponent but you can cycle it for one if you somehow don't need that which i almost can guarantee you will maybe you'll need the land maybe there's a, a weird situation where you brick on a single land hopefully that's not the case though or bin friendship for two create a one one red dinosaur creature token with haste and a one one white human soldier creature token so that's a not so bad the dinosaur has haste the human doesn't but again you're getting to create that additional human shredded sails so a little bit of more situational removal for red choose one destroy target artifact shredded sails deals four damage to target creature with flying and it has cycling for two so this isn't a high priority pick but it is still something i wanted to include because it cycles and it's great removal against flying and we're measly humans stuck on the ground so we have none of that no reach no flying all we have is flying removal Prickly Marmoset for three. It's a two, three. One of the greatest cards in the set, you guys. Uh, greatest red commons, anyways. It has first strike. Whenever you cycle a card, Prickly Marmoset gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So we're talking a four, three with first strike whenever we cycle. Oof. Ferocious Tigrilla for four. It's a four, three. It enters the battlefield with your choice of a trample or a menace counter on it. That's just a nice body. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then finally, Tentative Connection, which I wanted to mention earlier for four, it's a sorcery. This spell costs three less to cast if you control a creature with menace, so that's really nice. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. So it can only cost one, potentially, if you have a menace out. You get to snag their creature, amazing. You get to attack with their creature. And then hopefully, you get to sacrifice it with a sack outlet. If you don't have the bush meat, I would take another sack outlet, especially if you are trying to do the tentative connection combo. However, the bush meat draws you a card, so it's great. Um, so yeah, then you get to sack the card and gain life equal to its um, toughness, I believe, or whatever. 
Yeah, and then you also get to draw a card. So that's a really cool combo with Tentative Connection, uh, as long as you're sacrificing his creature after. Flourishing Fox. This is our first white uncommon for one. It's a 1-1, one, one, and whenever you cycle another card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Flourishing Fox, and it cycles for one. So that's actually pretty good, especially if we plan on doing a lot of cycling, because not only is it a cycle ramp creature, but it also can cycle itself for one. Valiant Rescuer for two. This is a 3-1, cycling for two, so a little bit more expensive there. However, when you cycle another card for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Oof, that's amazing, right? So we want to be cycling and just creating those tokens all the time. That's one of our payoff spells. Sanctuary Lockdown for three. This is our Anthem spell. Humans you control get plus one, plus one. That's the Anthem. And then you can pay two. Tap two untapped humans you control. Tap target creature and opponent control. So this is another great way, other than Snare Tactician, to shut down your opponent's big baddies so they can't attack you. Moving on to our Black Uncommons, you guys. Easy Prey for two. It's an instant. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost two or less. So it's nice removal and then cycling for two. So it's situational to a cycling deck, which we happen to be. Um, so this is very nice synergy. It's a great removal for the Boros deck. Even if you aren't using black, you can use it as a cycling card for two, which isn't the greatest. But just splash a little black in your cycling deck and run Mardu Humans maybe and incorporate some of this dank removal. <laughs> Moving on, we also have Heartless Act for two. Instant, choose one. Destroy target creature with no counters on it. Remove up to three counters from target creature. Bastion of Remembrance. This is another high priority pick as long as we don't have Sanctuary Lockdown in the deck or in the, in the pack. For three, it's an enchantment. When Bastion of Remembrance enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So it's a nice additional chip damage there. Call of the Death Dweller for three, a sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards with total converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch counter on either of them and put a menace counter on uh, either of them as well. So that's uh, a really cool way to put death touch and menace on one of your big baddies or uh, opposing baddies, right? Weaponize the monsters. This is just like incredible removal. Our first red uncommon for one it's an enchantment. Pay two, sacrifice a creature, weaponize the monsters, deals two damage to any target. Oh no. Uh, so this is really great removal, similar uh, to Sabbath Thundermane, which we'll get to in a second. Grill Scare Mentor, one of our higher priority picks here for sure for three. It's a 3-2 Human Warrior. When Frill Scare Mentor enters the battlefield, put a Menace Counter on target non-human creature you control. That's great, uh, especially for maybe uh, something like our Sabbath Thundermane. You can also pay three, tap it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control with Menace. Yeah, baby, right? So we're ramping everybody with Menace. And a lot of our creatures do have Menace. Uh, Sonoros Howl Bonder for three. It's a 2-2, two, two, so a little lacking in the base stat department. However, it's a human warrior. That's great. It has Menace. Plus, each creature you control with Menace can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. Oh, my lord. So that is just absolutely dazzling. Moving on, we have Reptilian Reflection for three. Another enchantment. Whenever you cycle a card, you may have Reptilian Reflection become a 5-4 dinosaur with Trample and Haste in addition to its other types until end of turn. So that's uh, a really good way to get that uh, damage through. We also have Sabai Thundermane for two. It's a 3-2, so base stats are very nice. It's a cat, unfortunately, so no human anthem from this. And whenever you cycle a card, you may pay two. When you do, Sabai Thundermane deals two damage to target creature, and you gain to life. So this is a, another great way to uh, remove his itty-bitty creatures from the field, right? We have Zenith Flare for four. This is an instant. Zenith Flare deals X damage to any target and you gain X life where X is the number of cards with cycling abilities in your graveyard. So if we're cycling, this is a great way to finish our opponent off uh, because we're doing that chip damage throughout the cycling, throughout the match, and then Zenith Flare to finish our opponent off. Say we get five, six cards with cycling in our graveyard. This is uh, either great creature removal if something's threatening us, or uh, it's just that last little bit into uh, the old end zone, right? Moving on to our bombs of the set, you guys. We have Mythos of Snap decks for four. If you play Rakdos, uh, sorry, each player chooses an artifact, a creature, or an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among non-land permanents they control, then sacrifices the rest. If Rakdos was spent to cast the spell, you choose permanents for each player. 
right? So this is a great way to just shut down everything that he's playing and assume full control of the field, um, probably leaving up what I could only say is one of your pump spells. Um, where are we here? Um, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I don't even know if Mythos of Snapdex is good here. Right, because we don't want to sacrifice our whole army. Actually, it is good because Bastion of Remembrance. <clears throat> so a little bit of an edit here. We have Mythos of Snapdax for four, a sorcery card. Each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among non-land permanents they control, then sacrifices the rest. If Rakdos was spent to cast the spell, you choose the permanents for each player instead. This is exceptionally good, especially if we can get one or multiple copies of Bastion of Remembrance. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life, right? So we're doing chip damage throughout this whole process. We have Menace to get around his blockers. We go wide with humans, so he can't block them all anyways. We stack our Bastion of Remembrance. We're using Anthem effects through Sanctuary Lockdown to get bigger and badder. Again, removing his creatures through Thundermane and our weaponized the monsters. We can deal chip damage to him as well if we need. Um, again, through weaponize the monsters, and Bastion of Remembrance, we can sacrifice a creature and deal three damage to him, so that's really powerful. Uh, if not, we can use our Mythos and sacrifice our whole field because we should have upwards of 10 creatures on the field because of all our human token stuff. Um, so we should be able to just kill him with Mythos of Snapdex if we get it. We spent too much time there. Moving on to General Kudro of Draineth. Other humans you control get plus one, plus one. Another Anthem effect, which is great. So if we can stack this with Sanctuary Lockdown for laughing, Whenever General Kudro of Draineth or another human enters the battlefield under your control, XL target card from an opponent's graveyard. That's not so great and limited. We'll ignore it. We can pay to sacrifice two humans, destroy target creature with power four or greater. This is actually pretty good, especially if he has those big baddies on the field, right? It costs three. It's a three, three. Base stats are good, plus other humans buff off. So that's actually a bomb in the set, uh, no matter what human deck you're playing almost. Finally, my favorite card of the archetype, Labyrinth Raptor for two. It's a 2-2 two -two Nightmare Dinosaur with Menace. Creatures you control with Menace, uh, sorry, whenever a creature you control with Menace becomes blocked, defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it. We can also pay two creatures you control with Menace, get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So the effect of them when they block, because with Menace they have to double block, and then when they do double block, they're gonna have to sacrifice one of the creatures. So that's really sick. Uh, it's just great removal through a creature effect. Not to mention, if we do have our Howl Bonder out, he's gonna have to triple block our menace creatures and then sacrifice uh, one of the two who are blocking as well. So this is just a great form of removal. I hope I did a semi-competent job of explaining all these cards to you guys and how they work together. I do recommend you check out the other parts of our series. Uh, I'm Hello Good Game. I'm live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. I also do daily uploads on YouTube at uh, Hello Good Game. And you can join our Discord if you need any help or assistance with anything Magic the Gathering Arena related. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day. And be sure to check out the other parts of our Ikoria Layer of Behemoths limited series for beginners. Thank you. Take care. Have a great day. If you liked today's video, be sure to check out some of our other content. We built playlists for our guides for beginners, and then we also have our greatest hits, which is a collection of our most popular videos. You can also subscribe if you're interested in winning up to 500,000 gems. So do that, tap that like button, send this out to a friend who you think might be interested in it as well, and have a great day.